اللہ سدور They are bending or twisting their chests, liyastakfumin, so that they can hide themselves from him. Alahina yastakshuna sayabahu, behold, when they are wearing their, their clothes, clothings upon them, yalamu mayu siruna wa mayu lenun, even then he knows what they are hiding and what they are making appear. Innahu alimum bidati sudur, he knows even those things which are in the, in the hearts or chests of the people. About this ayah, you know, there are many ways in which it has been interpreted. But because we find a hadith, you know, and it is included in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, narrated by Ibn Abbas of Allah Ta'ala and Huba, and that we should accept as the true exegesis of this ayah. And that is, among some of the Sahaba, some of the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were some who were overwhelmingly shy. Just as Hazrat Usman Razi Allah Ta'ala, shyness, you know, was, you know, overwhelming them. So even when they were, you know, answering the call of nature and so on, other things, and they had to be naked, they were very much ashamed of being naked. And they used to bend their, their chests and twist so that they can hide themselves from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah is seeing us. How can we be naked? So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is allaying their, you know, this fear of theirs. They want to hide from Allah. Well, even when you have your clothes you, are, you have put on, Allah knows you and see you through and through. Allah knows what you are hiding. You cannot hide and conceal anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they wrap their clothings over them, garments over them, even at that time, he knows what they conceal and what they reveal. Innahu alimum bizaati sudur, verily he knows even those things which are hidden in the hearts. Wama min dabbatin fil lardu illa ala Allahi rizquha. And there is no take creature, no creature on the whole of the earth, but upon Allah rests its sustenance. This is very important for those who want to serve the deen of Allah. They shouldn't fear where from they will eat. How will they be able to support themselves and their family? The risk, you know, and the providence and provisions and sustenance of this life that is guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّتِنْ فِي اللَّرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا Allah takes the responsibility upon him. Don't fear. Only you have to put your trust in him. That is the test. وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَهَا Allah knows. Its place of abode as well as the place of repository. We had these words in Suratul An'am, perhaps, or Araf, An'am, I think. And there I discussed. There are three views about it. Mustaqar is permanent abode. So mostly people think Mustaqar is Akhirah because that is going to be the permanent abode. Mustada is somewhere you keep something for some time. So this worldly life is Mustada. But there is another view. Although it's not held by so many, that you know, mustaqar for us is dunya for this time and presently. But mustada was the wombs of the mothers. We remained there for nine months. Wa yala mu mustaqar raha wa mustauda akulun fi kitabi mubi. And everything is recorded in a book which is manifest and very clear. Wa huwa aladhi khalaq samawati wal arda fi sitta teya. And it is He who created the heavens and the earth in six days. وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَارِ And his throne was over water. Now this ayah has also intrigued, you know, so many mufassirin. What does it mean? عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَارِ His throne was over water. Well, I dare to venture an opinion, and that is, as you know today, that before life appeared on this planet, for a very long period, you know, rains were falling. For thousands of years, all together in continuously because when this earth you know became cold it shrunk when it shrunk there were mountains there were you know uh, up and downs you know there were low regions and high regions then you know when rain came now there were the oceans so at that time it was all ocean all water so actually this this world for this world you know 
the the uh, government of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so to say that of this universal government it was on water but i can't say that this is actually what is meant by these words here but this is what you know has come to my mind wa kana ashu wal alma li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala then you know life began and then you know humans and mankind were created and what for created li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala so that he may try you and test you which one of you is better in his deeds this is the same ayah as we find in surah al-mulk khalaq al-mauta wal hayata li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala he created life and death and so, so that this worldly life becomes for you a period of testing in the same way li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala and you, he has created you here in this world this worldly life is meant for, to be a period of testing qul zume hasti se tu ibrahiman inde habab is zayan khane mein tera imtihan hai zindagi this life is actually a period of testing and trial wala in qulta innakum mabrusun min ba'd al maut and if you say you will be resurrected and raised after your death la yaqulun alladhina kafaru in hadha illa sihru mubin these unbelievers will surely say and it is nothing but a magic or a sorcery while an akhrna anhu al adaba ila ummatin maduda and if we postpone and delay for them the chastisement for a time which is already fixed maduda it is already fixed la yaqulun ma yahbisu they will surely say what has what is preventing it to come they were making haste why don't you bring that that chastisement we have been hearing you know from you for 10 long years that azab will come and chastisement and torment will come but what is holding it back ma yahbisu ala yawm tayatihim laysa makrufan anhum behold when it will come to them it will not be able to be turned away from them wahaqa bihim ma kanu bihi astahfirun and they will be encircled by that on which they were mocking and about which they were joking wala ila raqna al-insana minna rahmatan summa nazarnaha min innahu la yawsun kafur now these two conditions extreme conditions for man for common men usually is the case with men and if we make a man taste from our mercy we have given him wealth and health and everything so our mercy is there he is tasting life and all the good things of life summa nazarna min and then we withdraw these things from him innahu la yawsun kafur he becomes absolutely disappointed this despair and ungrateful he says never i saw never any good thing in life oh allah has never given me anything he became so ungrateful wala nazaknahu nama balad ra wasathu and if we give him the taste of our mercy and our you know blessings after you know some hurting had come to him something which was unpleasant to to la yaqulanna zahaba sayyiat anni and then he will say definitely say well all evils have gone from me innahu la farihun fakhur then he becomes overjoyed farah i told you this word is used in the quran not in a good sense farah overjoyed and fakhur boastful you know because everything which is coming to us in this world is for testing if something unpleasant it is also for testing whether we we are we persevere or not we have we show patience patience or not if something good has come whether we are grateful or not we become overjoyed you know and that also shows you know the the shallowness of our personality so actually we should have something in between in all the cases illa allazina sabaru but this is not the case of those who have patience illa allazina sabaru wa amilus salihat except those who have patience and perseverance and they could do good deeds ulaika lahum maghfiratun wa ajrun kabeer and for them there will be the forgiving pardoning and a very great reward 